small businesses are the really an economic engine for growth. Um, and it's really, for me, was a way not only to find success for myself, but to spread success far and wide is through small businesses and entrepreneurship. So um, I got really interested in it. I decided to actually become a commercial banker and I worked with small businesses who were seeking loans and, and growth capital and stuff like that. And I loved seeing how these businesses ran. I loved seeing their challenges. And I truly saw again that this is like the way that our economy kind of gets its its mojo is through small business. Hi, welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I'm super excited to be joined by another EOS implementer. I've got Michael Richmond, who is actually um, from over in the US, and he's a professional EOS implementer. But more importantly, he's actually a fourth generation business owner. So he's been through sort of four generations of businesses, and he's going to share some of his story with us. So welcome to the show, Michael. Love you to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here in here in Los Angeles, so uh, we're I definitely, sure. uh, yeah, definitely a, a far apart. But uh, I'm I'm really glad uh, to take the chance to talk to you. So, yeah, I uh, I'm a fourth, as she mentioned, as Deborah mentioned, uh, I'm a fourth generation business owner. Um, my story, my my family origin story is really interesting. Um, my my great grandfather was a cousin of uh, the famous gangster. If you look him up on Wikipedia, um, Meyer Lansky. And uh, in uh, in the 1930s, during Prohibition here in the U.S., um, he suggested to my grandfather, hey, why don't you get in the milk distribution business? And in addition to distributing milk, you can also distribute uh, alcohol to some speakeasies. So uh, that was my family's first foray um, into business. We uh, did own, uh, after Prohibition was over, we still continued on with our milk uh, business uh, until the late 90s, actually. Um, so uh, I grew up around entrepreneurs. Um, I, I love entrepreneurs, and I always felt like I had it in my blood. And so I went to school um, and studied communications, and I, I came out and I did some communications and PR work. And I realized that really um, my passion was around small businesses. I saw that small businesses are the really an economic engine for growth. Um, and it's really for me was a way not only to find success for myself, but to spread success far and wide is through small businesses and entrepreneurship. So um, I got really interested in it. I decided to actually become a commercial banker and I worked with small businesses who were seeking loans and, and growth capital and stuff like that. And I loved seeing how these businesses ran. I loved seeing their challenges. And I truly saw again that this is like the way that our economy kind of gets its, its mojo is through mm -hmm. small businesses. And so I decided I wanted to own my own. So I did what I thought was smart and I went to school and got my MBA. And I like to say that I don't think my MBA is actually worth the uh, wallpaper that we used it for uh, in, in, our, <laughs> in our house. Um, but I did, I got the MBA. And uh, after I graduated, I, I knew that I wanted to own a small business and the type didn't matter. I looked at everything. I looked at food distribution and I looked at manufacturing. I looked at a bunch of different things. And I, I came across actually a, a sign business to install uh, LED and neon signs. And uh, I was in escrow in that business, was driving there to sign the documents and, and uh, give the escrow uh, officer the check. And uh, the owner that I was buying it for calls me on the phone and he says to me, Michael, I don't feel like retiring. <laughs> and I said, what? I'm, I'm on the way to, to give you your money. No, no, I'm not going to retire. So I said, okay, I'm back to the drawing board. And uh, my father, who owned a manufacturing business here in Los Angeles, called me and said, uh, why don't you join me? And I said, well, I don't want to work for you. You have a partner. I don't want to work for your partner. And he said to me, well, what if you made my partner an offer and bought him out? And I said, that's fine. But I said, you know, I value our relationship as father son. And I've seen family businesses and I see how sometimes stuff can get messy. And I said, so one thing that's really important to me is that we're going to be 50, 50 owners, not 49, 51, where you tell me this is how it's going to be. We're going to be actual partners. And so I, I went ahead and I, I bought his partner out and uh, the company manufactured shade structures, poolside cabanas and uh, commercial awnings for large chains, Four Seasons Hotels, uh, Ritz Carlton's, people like that. And about five years into my journey, I realized I was kind of hitting the ceiling. 
And uh, my best friend who was uh, working for me at the time, um, and has been my best friend for about 20 years, she said to me, Michael, you're in an echo chamber. You talk to your wife, you talk to your father, but you're not talking to any other business owners. You're not improving. And that's why you feel like you're hitting the ceiling. Um, and so I said, okay, well, what am I, what should I do? And she said, have you ever looked into peer groups? And I said, no, nah, I'd never looked into it. And I, I did some research and I ended up joining EO, the entrepreneur organization um, here in Los Angeles and truly it changed my life. I, I like to make the joke that I'm not a joiner. In fact, when I was uh, a kid, one of my biggest fears, you out there listening might think this is a little strange, but I was always nervous <laughs> I was going to get abducted by a cult. Okay. And so when, when I heard about EO, I said, oh my God, I'm going to get abducted by a business cult now and I'm an adult. And then my friend said to me, it's very hard as an adult to get abducted. And I said, okay, that, that, that's fair. So um, I, joined, I joined EO and uh, it really changed my life. I joined a forum, which is a peer group, like a board of directors um, for you personally. And after about three months, one of the people in my forum turned around to me and they said, Michael, Every month you're coming in here with the same problems and nothing is changing. And you keep mm-hmm. saying, this is what I want for my business, but you're not really doing anything to change it. You're just kind of going around in a circle. And so they introduced me to, to Traction and to EOS, and we successfully implemented EOS in my business. We grew uh, revenue. We doubled revenue in about four years and increased EBITDA by about 65%. And... Uh, in a couple of years ago, we made the decision to sell the business. My father retired, and uh, I, I said now is a, a good time for me to do something else. And after I sold the business, I thought to myself, what is it that I am passionate about? I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old, and I want them to see uh, some, me doing something that is not only something good for the world, but also something that I love and enjoy doing. And I, I thought back to what was it that I really have enjoyed in the past five, seven years. Um, And I realized that while I was at EO, one of the things I did as a volunteer was coach and mentor up and coming business owners. And so I was doing this and I was introducing them to some of the EOS tools. And I said, well, what if I actually did this as a business where I could kind of spread the gospel to other business owners um, and help them get what they want from their business so they don't struggle in the way that I did. Um, And so that's uh, kind of uh, where I am today, my story. Oh, that's awesome. That was back in August 2022. And now yes. you're out there actually helping other people, um, which is fantastic. So yeah. I want to explore a little bit before we get started. Um, I always like to ask my guests, what are their professional and personal bests? What are the things you're most proud of in your professional life and in your personal life so far? Yeah, so I'd say in my professional life, and again, when I talked earlier about how I feel like small businesses are the economic engine. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that one of the things I'm most proud about is when I think about all the people that work for me, my employees and my team members. I think about the fact that I helped put food on their table. I gave them opportunities. And by giving them the opportunity, they were able to give their kids and sometimes their grandkids opportunities that they might not have otherwise had. So when I look at professionally, I say to myself, there's kids that are going to college because of the business that I ran that maybe wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise. There's people that have bought their first homes, uh, you know, purchased a car, went on that dream vacation because of the success and what we built together. So that's really what I'm most proud of um, as a business owner. And then personally, I have to say um, my, my family. I, I have a, I mentioned a four-year-old, a one-year-old, my wife. Um, we're all very close and uh, I love them all very much. And so personally, I'm just, it, it warms my heart every morning I'm able to, uh, get my kids dressed and get them off to school. And it just, uh, it's one of the greatest uh, things I can ever imagine. No, that's wonderful. So I'm going to explore a little bit, if I may now, around um, EO. So I I was also a member of EO for about three and a half years. I know that it really is a game changer. Uh, And one of the things I say to my EOS clients is, you know, I think you have to have an operating system, which is EOS. You need to have um, a peer group that can actually support you as well. So tell me a little bit about what you got out of EO and what you found it did for you, both, again, both professionally and personally. Yeah, I would say a bunch of things. One is it's really funny when you join EO, I, I sat there and, and I saw the group of people that were in my forum and in my chapter. And I said, well, none of them are doing exactly what I'm doing. How is this actually going to help me? And mm-hmm. I think that the beauty of it is the fact that nobody in my chapter or forum was doing what I was doing. So to be in a group where I'm sharing my issues and maybe have somebody who owns a chain of orthodonture 
uh, uh, offices or, you know, is a, uh, is a, a financial uh, advisor, owns some financial uh, advising offices, listen to what I'm going through and have them come from totally left field and say, hey, did you, have you thought about this? Did you try that? Did, is this something that, you know, you've considered is, is a game changer? Because I'm so stuck as a business owner when I was when I had my business in this, like I said, this vacuum chamber of I'm only talking, even the other business owners that I'm talking to are all people that do what I do, my competitors. And so mm-hmm. to be able to have somebody who has no knowledge of my business kind of come into it and take a look at it and help me um, was huge for me because they looked at it in a different way. And so it helped me grow in, in that way professionally. And then it also just helped me grow personally because it's, it's hard sometimes you can't, you know, a lot of people make their friends and their social networks at work, but I always found as a business owner, it was very hard for me to consider, uh, you know, my employees, my friends, I didn't really want to socialize them. I wanted to keep that boundary, but all of a sudden you're an EO, you're with people who are on the same level playing field as, as you, and they're your colleagues, the way that you, you have a colleague if you're at a job and you don't own, own a business. And so able to socialize, able to also discuss some of the things as business owners that we bring home with us psychologically that, you know, are, are kind of um, individual to business owners um, that other people don't experience uh, is, is also was huge for me. Um, also to have my, my wife be able to talk to other wives whose husbands are business owners and hear, you know, hey, I know what it's like that, that week that he's, Cash flow is bad, and we don't know if we're going to make payroll and that type of stuff. Because my He's wife's grumpy. a therapist. Yeah, <laughs> right. my wife's my wife's <laughs> yeah. a therapist, but you know she doesn't understand business per se in mm-hmm. terms of you know making a payroll or or things like that. So the ability to just have somebody else to bounce it off of is who's been there is awesome. Yeah, and I completely agree. And I think you know you form really, really close relationships because you 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 talk about that stuff you can't talk about with anybody else, and it's all based on sharing experiences as opposed to um, a coach or a mentor who will kind of you know tell you what they've done. Sure. Um, I think it just gives you that that opportunity to yeah to really get um, deep with the people, um, both on a you know personal professional level. I loved, but I had I, there were six of us in our forum, five five guys and myself, and they were my brothers. They were my five brothers. I still keep yeah. in contact. I had. I, had breakfast breakfast with Warner just two days ago, and he was from my former EO. Yeah, it's great. It's I, really good. I could tell this great story uh, for people listening out there. Um, my uh, my wife had a pretty difficult delivery with our first child, and our, our baby was in NICU, and uh, she got out of NICU, and um, my wife wasn't going to be able to leave the hospital and come home with us. I was going to have to take the baby home, and I was a first-time father, and I was freaked out and beside myself. And the first thing I thought to do was text my my forum mates. And I'm like, I am scared. I don't know what to do. And one of my forum mates called me up and she goes, okay, Michael, she goes, tonight, the first night you're home, I'm sending over a nurse to help teach you, a night nurse to teach you all these things about putting the baby to bed and all this. And she knew enough that she said, this is going to help you, Michael. She said, I don't even, she said, don't even tell me no, don't tell me you don't. The night nurse is going to be there. She's going to be there at eight o'clock. And to just have that, those people that know me well enough to say, here's what you need in order to help you in that moment um, was just, was just amazing. Yeah. And I think it's wonderful. I know that with a lot of the EO forums, a lot of them actually embrace EOS. And so the fact that they gave you a traction book as well, I mean, that is sort of some, somebody deeply caring for you, wanting to see you move ahead, um, exactly. giving you a tool that could actually do that. So tell me, I, I'm going to share my little story. So my story about reading traction, when I first got given it, I actually found it a bit of a tough book. I, I didn't actually really get into it very easily, but I got given Get a Grip at the same time. And I started reading Get a Grip and I, and I have this whole thing about I love business fables. So I got completely hooked on Get a Grip, read it in like less than half a day. And then I immediately wanted to read the traction book. because It's like, okay, now I need to find out how this is actually done. Um, tell me about your experience with the traction book. Actually, when I read the traction book, my experience was definitely different. It was like, it was one of these types of things where I went like, oh, <laughs> this is like, I didn't think like, we need to have core values. Like, I mean... I've been in business. I've seen lots of businesses in my life. I went to business school, yet I didn't have any core values. I need a chart that says what everybody's responsibilities are. Like I went, doesn't that, doesn't that make sense? 
to everybody. Yep. And why didn't I do that? And so for me, it was that, oh my God, like the simple things can change my business. And this doesn't have to be, you know, I've had these consultants come in there year after year and they, they walk away and leave me with a 300 page SOP manual, or they try to, you know, delve into the, the business and they're there for, you know, every single day for, for five, six hours, racking up big bills because they're trying to rack up hours, but the company's never moving forward. And all of a sudden I look at, at the tools in there and I go, these are simple things that even these consultants weren't weren't putting forward. And so as you start to roll them out and you see how little, these little easy, simple, simple things like telling people what they're responsible for, <laughs> creating scorecards is, is a game changer. I tell the story. We, we weren't tracking numbers at my company. Is it okay if I tell the story? Yeah, sure. About I'd love story. to hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, weren't, we weren't tracking numbers at my company. So um, we were, as I mentioned, we uh, had a sewing department and, uh, you know, fabric sewing. Mm -hmm. And so after we read Traction, we started implementing EOS. One of our numbers was we wanted no more than 5% reject rate out of our sewing department. So now that we're tracking the number every week and I'm looking at these numbers in our in our weekly level 10 meetings, I'm seeing week after week we're at, you know, 12%, 13%. And so I'm going, okay, what's the problem? And then when we rolled the scorecard down to the next level and every single sewer was then tracked on their, on, on, on what was going on in QC and their reject rates, all of a sudden we discovered that we had one sewer that was re- getting 75% of her stuff rejected. Wow. And so That's... when we called her wow. in, <laughs> yeah, we called her in and we said, hey, what's going on? And she goes, you know what? She goes, I want to retire. I'm not into this anymore. It's not for me. Thanks for bringing this to my attention. We parted ways. All of a sudden, my reject rate was around 2% wow, as soon as she left. Okay, so yeah. but with, without the numbers, first off, she was happier because she left. And she was kind of like, I think, waiting for somebody to say, hey, it's time to retire. She felt like she was loyal to us. And we didn't even know that this was going on because we weren't tracking our numbers. Hmm. So it was it was those little things that were game changers. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think maybe because I had done some coaching before I came across EOS, I think that we were doing some of these things. But I think that the thing that kind of struck me was that the EOS, the operators, like core values, we've always been taught people to have core values, but I didn't really fully understand the importance of them and how you could live and breathe them and and reward. And the people analyze it just makes that stuff so simple. We were doing measurables. We had KPIs. But again, I don't think we had kind of worked out about everybody needs to have a measurable. Everybody needs to have a number that they're kind of held accountable for. So for me, it brought a lot of that together. But I think it just took the Get a Grip book to get me really interested because it gave me oh, yeah. a, a real life example to go, ah, that's why it's important. <laughs> now I want to find out how they do it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you got given the book, you started implementing EOS into the business, you started measuring things like your rejects. I think that level of detail, you know, when you get down to, oh, wow, it's one person that's actually having a major impact. You could look at the high level numbers and and just think, you know, there's something major going on. But in actual fact, it comes down to a a, a little, a small thing, not a small thing from her perspective. Don't get me wrong. I mean, obviously, yeah, knowing that you want to retire is quite, quite a big thing. But yeah, you can start to really pinpoint what's going on. What are the other tools that really helped change the business because you you ended up selling the business um you know a very successful business great exit what do you think eos did to help you with that well i think the the getting the right team around me because the team was really valuable when the 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 ownership came in and bought the company and i think that having you know hiring using our core values was huge because you would, I, you know, I would do something where I would give my the core value speech, where I would give an example of each of our core values during the interview, and then I would ask my people that I was interviewing, I'd say, "Give me an example in your work life when you've seen this core value, or define it for me, or tell me in your personal life when you've been at, you know, the drugstore, you've been at the supermarket, or at a restaurant, and you've seen these core values in play." And that really enabled me to weed out a lot of wrong people that I would have hired otherwise just for their skill set. It enabled me to say they don't understand. One of our core values was customer first every single time. And that was really how we made a name for ourselves and got these huge clients. And, you know, when you interview people and you start to dig into 
well, this is what customer first means to us. And they don't even understand what customer first means. And they don't have any interest in customer first. It enabled me to make the right decisions. And it enabled me, the people analyzer, also with our core values, to, to know when I should be giving people raises and when I should be, you know, recognizing them and that type of thing. So having the right team around me um, was, was huge. And I think that I, I owe that to the core values and the people analyzer. Oh, that is fantastic. And so um, for people who maybe are sitting on the, the edge and kind of thinking, oh, yeah, I probably need some kind of operating system, but, you know, I've tried a few and they don't seem to work. What do you think it is about EOS? And I know I've got my own opinion, but what do you think it is about EOS that makes it easy to bring into an entrepreneurial business or a family business? Well, I think I think really it's the simplicity of it. Like I said, when I when I read Traction, I'm like, there's not this is not rocket science. I think people get scared sometimes when you're when you you're telling them what you want to do with them, and they think that I don't have the MBA and I'm not you know. Jack Welch or Warren Buffett. So how am I going to ever do this? But when you read traction, you start putting the steps together, you know, the, the key components together. When you start rolling it out to your organization, you realize things like core values, they live in everybody's heart in the organization already anyway. We're just yeah. taking what's in your heart and we're putting it on paper and we're using it to run our business. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what I think is the beauty to me of EOS. We're taking, you know what the important measurables are deep down for your company, but now we're taking those and we're shining a light on it. And so that's the other thing about EOS. I like to say it's like going into a dark room and flipping the lights on and seeing what's actually in there, you know? Yeah. The brilliance is in the simplicity is what I always just say, and it's absolutely true. But so there's some people, I know I get this kind of feedback, oh, you know, but it's really templated and it's just going to be, you're going to force me into a box and, and it's not going to work for me. Um, how do you deal with that as a question? Yeah. Well, first off, when people say it's templated, I say, who cares? If it works for you and you're making, I mean, and you're making a lot of money and you're getting what you want from your business or, you know, you're, you're able to go golfing three days a week now because EOS has been implemented in your company. Why do you care if it's templated and every other company uses it? But second off, the tools are templated, but the things within the tools aren't templated, right? I'm not telling you what your core values are. I'm not saying these have to be your core values. You're choosing the core values. I'm just showing you the vehicle that's going to get you there. So it's like driving in a car, if you will, right? Like every car has four wheels and a motor, but the inside is different and the motor's a little bit different. And so we use the same, the same tools to build the car, but everything about it is different once you get to the inside to the meat. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And I think that's, that's kind of the reasoning I give as well as that, yes, it is a framework and it's designed to give you some structure and some discipline, some accountability, but without it being too rigid. Like I actually don't think EOS is rigid at all. It's It's got some very simple frameworks that if you follow, you'll get the results. And it's very much about what is in your heart, what your business consists of. It's bringing it to the forefront so that everybody gets on the same page with it. Yeah. Right. And the other analogy that I always give is it's like going to the gym. You know what I mean? Like for me, EOS is like going to the gym. You you go to the gym and you have all these exercises that you can do and, and you know, that, that the trainer maybe suggests that you do. And you could do them incorrectly and you're not going to get anything out of it. Hmm. So, yep. you know, my trainer used to say to me, Michael, I could train you in a park with no equipment and I'd give you a better workout than you would you know, get from a lot of other trainers. And I think mm -hmm. that, you know, it's being able to not only have the tools, but to utilize them correctly. Yeah, I completely agree. Awesome. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your life now as a professional EOS implementer. Um, yeah. Tell me how it's the great. day looks like these days. Yeah. <laughs> well, I look, my favorite thing is going out and meeting people. I love meeting people. I love talking to them. I love helping them. Like this is my this is my unique ability is helping mm -hmm. business owners. And I, I like to say, I'm, I, I was, I was mentioning to Deborah, I saw that, you know, you volunteer with, um, you know, with animals and give back in that way. I'm not great at that. I'll, I'll be totally honest. I'm not great at, at volunteering in that way. But for me, giving back is, is helping these business owners get what they want from their business. And then that in turn gives all their employees 
what they want from their lives, I think. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's really special. So I love seeing different businesses. I love different industries. It's so funny. People say to me, do you specialize in any industry? No, I don't specialize in any industry because there's so many similarities between businesses and what they're dealing with. And it doesn't necessarily matter what the industry is. But going in and just learning about the nuances gives me a whole new view on the world and on life, whether it's when I'm purchasing insurance because I work with an insurance client. Now I'm thinking about insurance in a little bit of a different way or, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever the, the case may be. And I think it goes back to your, your story about EO as well, right? It's like actually um, there are very, very similar issues and challenges and problems that all these businesses face, um, but seeing them from different perspectives is just phenomenal. I know that I get a real kick out of working with my clients, doing these podcasts. Every time I do anything, I'm not only helping, but I'm learning myself. And I think that's a, it's a great way to live life. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So what does your ideal client look like in EOS? I mean, again, my ideal EOS client is is somebody that really like is open to self-examination. And that's the same mm -hmm. thing in, in EO and, and it's self it's constant self-improvement. It's okay, I, I need to be honest enough with myself as to what my skill set is, where my shortcomings are, and and how I can improve those things. And that's the mm -hmm. same thing in EOS. It's this constant state of not only um business improvement, but it's self-improvement. And so my ideal client is the person who says, I want to improve myself and I'm open to change that. I'm not just going to sit there and try to throw roadblocks up every two minutes. Well, this won't work or that won't work. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm great with, I'm great with family businesses. Um, like, like you, cause I lived in one, I've lived in a few actually. And so I know, I know what it's like and I know the unique set of challenges there. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely, um, and, and I still talk to my dad, by the way. So um, oh, after being in business with him. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> Every day I talk to him still. So. Um, but uh, hey, how, How's I, yeah. retirement going for him, by the way? Oh, great. He, is, uh, he has uh, two Corvettes and uh, he is going, he loves traveling. So he's going to the uh, anniversary of D-Day next month in, uh, in, uh, at the beaches in, in, uh, in France. So. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, so you understand because family business is the reason I, I've, I'm the same as you. I, I didn't actually have a family that was in family business. My family was very traditional, but I've worked in family businesses as a GM, as a CEO. Right. So I kind of got to be on the non-family part of the family business. And I love the dynamics. Um, and I'm also really passionate. I, you know, you just said that you still speak to your father. I think that family business has the uh, potential to destroy those relationships if it's not done correctly. And I love that EOS can actually bring all this stuff out into the open and have people doing what they love with people they love. And it stops those family fights. It actually means they can go to the family barbecue and still be a family and still love each other and still enjoy each other's you know, time together. So that's why I love family businesses. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just think, cause it, it does, there's, you know, there's so there's different roles, you know, you're, yeah. you're, he's my father, but he's also my partner and, mm -hmm. you know, EOS helps me crystallize that. And, and again, the, the number one tool for that is the accountability chart, right? Like, yeah. this is what this is what I'm responsible for and this is what you're responsible for. And then structure first, people second. I think with family right. businesses, it gives, them that, it gives them that opportunity that they've never really had to go, hey, here's what the business really, really needs. And these are the sort of the main functions and the accountabilities we need. Um, and then we start to put the people in there. And sometimes it gives the family permission to kind of go, hey, we don't need you in, in, in a role here in this leadership team. Or for the person to step back as well and kind of go, phew. Actually, I had a, had a father the other day say to me, um, I really don't want to do any of these roles anymore. I actually want to go off and do X, Y, Z. And it was like, wow, thank, that's what the accountability chart gave him permission to kind of go. Mm, it's exactly. not for me anymore. Yeah. Exactly. Or sometimes it opens up that conversation. What I've had too is, hey, maybe this, this person in our family uh, needs a paycheck and that's why they're hanging around right now, but they're causing more damage at the company <laughs> than, yeah. than it's worth. And, you know, I, it's like, well, maybe then you just need to give them a paycheck and tell them not to come in anymore because, it, it, you know, I, it, your family and if you're responsible for them, I get it. But, you know, I had family members um, who um, my, my uncle uh, was uh, unfortunately a drug addict and um, my family kind of had to help him and he didn't always come into work in, in our business and things like that. And, and I always look at that when I'm talking to family businesses and I'm like, you know, 
if this person can't be counted on, but you need to help them out financially, those are two different issues, but don't mm -hmm. hamper the business by trying to help the person. There might be a way to do both. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. And I think the the tools, the EOS tools give them the ability to have have those conversations that they may never yeah. have had because they may not have seen an opportunity before. They might have not known how to deal with it. So we give them the ability to do that. Okay, so um, talking of tools, um, I always like to ask our guests for their kind of three top tips and tools so they can actually walk out of the listening to this and go and do something useful in their life. So what are your your three top tips, tools? Could be books, could be EOS tools, whatever you like. Well, one, one book that I absolutely love if people haven't read it um, is The Go-Giver. I don't know if you mm. if you read that. If you like business fables. I had, I had Bob Berg on my podcast just a few weeks ago. Oh, did so you? He read the, yeah. And I've got his other business partner, the one that wrote The Go-Giver Marriage. Um, his, that, that he's coming in to talk to me as well. So I, oh, love, I love The Go-Giver series. Yeah. Yeah. So if people haven't read that, I mean, that's yeah. how I run my life is giving back. Um, and, you know, giving back before you ask for anything in return. Um, and mm -hmm. that's what I took from, from the go-giver. I'm always about that's helping first. It's not yeah. about how can I make a dollar here or a dollar there. It's about like, let me help first. And if there's a relationship to be had, that'll come to fruition on its own. Always live, live my life that way. I teach that yeah. to my kids. Too. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And I think that the great thing about the go giver, there's actually a whole series of them. So there's one just the general go giver principles, but then there's one about sales, there's one about marriage, there's, there's a whole range of them, which is they're just phenomenal books. I completely agree. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say if, if people haven't read that book, um, that's really a great one to check out. I would say mm -hmm. also, like I said, the, the scorecard, um, if we're talking about specific EOS tools, really yeah. um, thinking about what are those numbers that are going to give you the absolute pulse on your business. Um, cause yeah. as a business owner, I would wake up at 2am and I'd think to myself, okay, um, how do I know if, uh, Timmy's doing a good job? And then I would come into work in the morning and I'd ask four people, Hey, is Timmy doing a good job? And they'd tell me, yeah. And that was how I would, I would judge people was based on what somebody else said about them. And, you know, in, in hindsight, a lot of people run that way. They don't have substantive data to make decisions. And mm -hmm. so just the idea and, and. One of the things that the implementer that I worked with, uh, book another book that he suggested to me is a one called the uh, the Checklist Manifesto. Oh yeah, Not I don't know that. if you're familiar with it, but it's no, about using sure. checklists for everything. And I ended up using checklists for everything in my company, and that in and of itself became a scorecard measurable. Did Bob fill out the checklist in the morning? So yeah. we had you know a fleet of trucks that would leave every day, and every person had to fill out a checklist. Uh, before they went and one of their scorecard measurables was whether or not they filled that out so we were able to track both of those things and just being able to see those things numerically like he won't even take the time to fill out this checklist to make sure that the truck brakes aren't going to give out and make sure that they have enough windshield wiper fluid would tell me like this is that these are the people where we need to make changes and so um, yep. I would say number two, that's, that's a great tool. And then, and, uh, I, think, and I think just, sorry, just to go back to your original yeah. example, the scorecard too, I think that it, um, it really does, if you're using the right numbers, it helps you drill down to the kind of the real issue. And I bet if you'd ask people about the sower that was ready to retire, they probably all liked her and probably thought she was all great. So if you'd ask them how she was going, they would have gone, oh, she's great. She's doing well. Um, it's, an, it's not until you get to the actual numbers, we can start to see where there's a, a potential issue there. Yeah. Or I loved her at happy hour. You know, we went out yeah. to dinner after work and she was so much fun. You know, but that, so they're going to, of course, say, oh, yeah, she's great. And so she's I great. think a lot of, yeah. right, exactly. A lot of business owners uh, kind of make decisions that way. And that's, you know, making it on based on ego is, is really um, is really hard. And mm -hmm. and I would say the third tip is get get yourself a peer group. Um, we talked yes. about it earlier, but yeah. if it's not EO, if it's not uh, YPO, there's tons of other peer groups out there. But get there's yourself tech, a peer there's group. vistage, yeah, yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Well, I actually run I run a peer group here in Auckland for mid sized businesses. Um, and I because I know from my own experience how important that really is. Uh, but there are so many different options. I, I completely agree. It's like having that ability to chat to your peers. It can be really lonely at the top. It can be really lonely when you're running a business, and this gives you that opportunity to have other friends outside of the business. 
Exactly, that are there and looking out for your best interests. So it's a yeah. total game changer. You have to do it. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, um, we could talk forever because we're both yeah. obviously very passionate about very, very similar things, um, but sadly we can't. <laughs> um, if people want to get hold of you, Michael, can you tell me how they would find you and what they can do to have a chat to you? Sure, sure, sure. My email address is Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L dot Richman, R-I-C-H-M-A-N at E-O-S worldwide e-o-s-w-o-r-l-d-w-i-d-e.com and uh would love to set up a time to talk to anybody uh, if i could be of help to them yeah that's fantastic and i'll also put your eos um, website in the comments in the um in the podcast as well so we can actually Great. easily find you there we have some of the longest um, email addresses in the world don't we <laughs> yeah exactly that's okay <laughs> yeah good <laughs> there's worse things hey well look that yeah, that's true. Um, it's been a real pleasure to actually hear about your story. I love li talking to people who've not only run EOS in their business, but are now out there actually helping other people with it. Um, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing thank so openly. I think sharing those specific examples just gives people a chance to go, ah, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, and don't be put off by me not finding traction easy to read. Obviously, <laughs> Michael found it a very easy read. I think it's different horses for courses, but it is a great book. It is seriously the, the best way to kind of work out what EOS is. Um, and my tip would be, you know, read the book, start doing this stuff, but do get yourself an implementer because you cannot work in the business and um, run the EOS process as well as somebody can from externally. Um, I know that in the last couple of weeks, I've, I've actually engaged with an EOS implementer myself for my own business because I've realized from working with another client that they'd been self-implementing um, and they said that you can't run meetings really, really well and run the meetings and facilitate and do all that stuff and still be involved in the meeting and I've realized I'm I can't either so yeah I think having an implementer is the best way forward so speak to Michael I'll put his URL in our in our podcast notes and again Michael thank you for your time no problem thank you